joined us today to touch on a subject that um, many of us think about, but maybe we don't take action on it. And so that is um, making a will. And sometimes it's a topic that we struggle to, to talk about, but uh, we're here today to, uh, for three reasons, to share um, how you can make a will, why it's important to have a will, and, uh, and, and then we'll hear from our special guests, Kay and Jackie. And then we'll talk about a resource that Pet Partners will be offering, uh, now offers to anybody who wants to have a will made. And um, I see that Megan has joined us from Phoenix, Arizona. I hope she's staying cool while we're getting started. Um, yeah, exactly. So first of all, I think a lot of people know of there's like National Teachers Day, National um, uh, Nurses Day, and even National's ice, National Ice Cream Day, and, uh, which although you've missed that this year, it's already gone past, but that doesn't stop us from Didn't miss it. doing our ice cream, <laughs> exactly, especially during the summer. <laughs> and we have National Animal Therapy Day too, that's at the mm -hmm. end of um, April each year that Pet Partner celebrates. But probably what people aren't aware of is that there's a National Make Your Will Month I mean, who knew that was news? That was news to me. So, as I mentioned before, today we'll cover three items: why having a will is important, and then we're going to hear from our guests Jackie and Kay, and then we'll share a resource for you that Pet Partners now has on our platform. So, before we go down too far down the path, let me introduce myself. I'm Mary Bomke. I'm staff member of Pet Partners, and we're pleased today to have uh, Jackie Gunby from Northern California, Sacramento. Give us a wave there, Jackie. And Kay Mooney from Connecticut. Hello to both of you. Uh, Jackie has been part of Pet Partners now for 20 years, Jackie? Yeah. 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 Yep, 20 years. And we're so appreciative of all you've done for Pet Partners. Jackie's been a former board member of Pet Partners. She's a mentor to new teams, an evaluator, and um, a handler. She's been a national program educator, and she and her dog, Gertie, have done much in the communities to help other people. So, Jackie, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm so pleased. Great. And we'll get to hear from you shortly about um, your steps of making a will. Mm -hmm. And Kay, as I mentioned, is joining us from Connecticut, and Kay is currently on the Pet Partners Board. And through her um, former executive role at Aetna, Kay has been really instrumental in, in guiding and leading Pet Partners to develop a uh, wellness program through taking, your, taking um, animals, team animals to businesses to provide um, comfort and interactions, and it's through some surveys that um, Kay has been instrumental in through Aetna. Um, we have found that taking your having teams visit businesses mm -hmm. really proved to be worthwhile. I mean, who doesn't want to take a break and pet an animal? <laughs> and um, so that is what's helped launch Pet Partners in our um, workplace program with these animals. So Kay, thank you so much for all you've done mm -hmm. for pet partners on so many levels as well. Yeah, my pleasure. So, so we'll hear from both Jackie and Kay shortly. But first as a disclaimer, I just wanted to say that we're not here to offer you any legal or financial advice. This is really an opportunity just to share with you why having a will is so important. And as I mentioned earlier, this is August, who knew? It's Make Your Will Month. So <laughs> the, the numbers vary, but um, you may be surprised to know that about 60% of Americans don't have a will, which is a huge number of mm -hmm. individuals. And so you might ask yourself, well, if 60% of people don't have a will, then why, why is it so important that I have one? Well, if you ever had to deal with, with an estate of someone who didn't have a will, you will you should be on this, uh, this Facebook Live to share with us why it is so important because it's a real challenge for individuals for if they're working on an estate and someone who doesn't have a will. So 
40, if, if 60 percent of people don't have a will, what's holding them back? Um, you know, facing mortality is not an easy topic. I think we would all agree. Um, and but it's something that once you have a will in place, it gives you peace of mind. And I mm -hmm. bet Jackie and Kay will be able to attest to that here shortly. Mm -hmm. um, another reason people procrastinate, you know, why do today what you could do tomorrow? Yep. I mean, that's many of us um, do that in our daily lives and making a will <laughs> is, is no different, I believe. So we'll we'll talk about why having a will, um, you know, why procrastinate? It's August is make your will month. So this could be a, a good month to have have your will made. You know, another another a source of why people don't have a will is they consider it maybe too expensive and um, it could be costly. So we'll address that later and um, share why we have this new resource for you that will help um, alleviate a cost that might be prohibitive to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I see Megan has commented that's, that's her, well, Megan, she says she procrastinates. Well, we'll we'll take care of that and help you through. <laughs> um, another reason people might not have a will is sometimes it's challenging to figure out who to leave your your property and your assets to. If you have family, nieces, nephews, children, brothers, sisters, friends, um, sitting down and making some thoughtful decisions may be mm -hmm. holding some people back, and so. Um, I can't, we can't help you with that, but that's going through this exercise of what we'll share later may help you alleviate um, part of that. And then the final thing, it's sometimes it's just hard to get started. You know, whether it's a new exercise program or um, not eating ice cream every night during the summertime, um, it's just hard to get started to make a will. But I think what we'll share with you pretty soon will help alleviate that concern and make it easy for you to get started. So what is a will? It's A will is simply a legal document that um, allows you to make decisions while you're alive that shares how you're gonna be transferring your property mm -hmm. after your death. And it allows us to have control of how we wanna disseminate our assets and our property for your family, your pets, because um, it's important to have those plans in place even for your pets mm -hmm. and for yeah. close friends. So I think um, making decisions about um, how you want to transfer property upon your death is important because really, I don't think you want somebody else doing that for you. And so it's, it's a good way to um, make these decisions and it's August, make a will month. So what better time to do that? So. I'm going to I'm going to ask Jackie and Kay some questions, if you don't mind, and um, we'll get started and, and see because you've completed your wills. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. in place. There. So so Jackie, let me start with you and then we'll we'll ask Kay the, se the same question. Um, what trigger what what inspired you to have a will? Was it a trigger triggering event in your life? or something you just as procrastinated doing or what made you decide to finally get a will in place? Um, you know, the other thing, the other reason I think people don't always think about getting a will is they think they might, they don't really have enough to have a will. Like there's maybe some magic threshold that, oh, I have to have a million dollars to make a will. And that's not really true. It's whatever you have, how are you going to um, dispose of that or divide that out? Um, I would say probably the biggest thing um, for me was I wanted to have a say as to what happened to my animals. I wanted to have instructions in place for that. Um, and people don't always think about that. Um, so I wanted a special instruction initially in there as to who was going to take charge of my animals. And I also wanted to put some money in it to help them care for my animals if I uh, passed away before my animals did. And I have, I don't, I didn't specifically talk about any animal, but if I had animals, this is the person that I want to make uh, those decisions for me that is in line with how I think about that. Um, 
The other was um, we don't have we didn't have any children. Um, my ex husband and I didn't have any children. Um, and so, you know, you get to be really greedy about that and stuff a lot of money away if you can. And that's what we're going to live on when we're retired. Um, but also, you know, what do I want to benefit out of that? If people have children, they think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave that to my children. And I don't have that. My nieces and nephews are well cared for already. And what's important to me? And to me, um, pet partners, frankly, has been such a key and cornerstone of my life as an adult that I want to make sure it continues. It's really that simple. That's great. Before, be, thank you, Jackie. Before I ask Kay, Jackie, when you decided who was going to be um, the caretaker of your animals mm -hmm. in case something happened to you, you contacted that person, oh, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I I was 99% sure that wasn't going to be a problem if I appointed them because we had discussed it prior just in passing as part of our friendship. But yes, I did let that person know they are in there. I um, gave them the phone number of the executor that I have. I gave the executor the phone number of the person that I want to make that decision and email and that kind of information so they wouldn't be surprised or not know who to contact or something like that. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's that's great. Well, and you know, I think sometimes we tend to forget about our pets. Not that we should, but you know, you tend to think of the two leggeds and sometimes not the animals. So that's a good point to bring up. Thank you. And a shorter lifespan. They have a shorter lifespan and you assume you're going to outlive them, but that doesn't always happen. Yeah. And Megan has a question. Do you have to be related or married to your caretaker for the animals? No, 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 um, no. You know, in fact, um, my ex-husband, um, who, you know, is a wonderful person, actually, um, the things that I wanted to make sure continued for my animals was not something he was really interested in. And I did talk to him about that. Um, and he had, you know, say in that. Um, but then obviously, of course, after uh, my husband and I divorced, I did update the will um, to reflect that legal change in my life. But the things that were in there uh, for my animals remained. Right. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing. Kay, what about you? What Was there some um, triggering event for you that led you to complete your estate plan? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marion. And it's a little uh, similar to, to what Jackie described. Um, for me, back in 2010, my, my father passed away. And then in 2011, my brother passed away. Oh. Uh, so oh. I was helping my mother settle both of those estates. Um, and, you know, that really planted the seed for me at that point. Um, that this was something that was important um, for all of those reasons that, that you mentioned before, Mary, about making sure that your wishes, um, you know, are clear and documented. Um, did we do it back then? Nope. Didn't do uh -huh. it. Put it on the to-do list. But uh -huh. so busy, right? Didn't happen. Um, and then from 2014 to 2018, I was leading employee benefits and well-being at Aetna. And um, one of the areas of focus that we had for our employees was on uh, financial well-being. And we had a well-being, um, a financial well-being assessment that our employees um, could take to help them understand some of the areas that maybe they need to improve to, to help their financial well-being. So it could be budgeting, it could be debt management, it could be retirement planning, life insurance, estate planning. So I decided I'm going to take it too. And guess what? You know, spoiler alert, it said we needed to create a will. Um, still didn't. Um, and it was one of those things that was always in the back of my mind that really need to do this and you know similar to jackie we had a dog um and i was worried you know from a guardianship perspective and making sure that we had assets to you know to to help him um you know going forward um so it wasn't until my mother passed away in 2019 um, and i was the executor of her will um that it really drove it home for me how important it was um to make sure that your wishes you know, are clear um, and are well documented. Um, so 
Yeah. Well, and so you know, kind of like done. But you know, like you said, it was it was one of those things that we knew we should do it. I kept having having all of these triggering moments that we need to do this and life is busy. And, you know, as we're going to talk about when you finally do it, it's like, why did I wait so long? Yeah, so I know. Yeah, absolutely. that's true. That's true. You know, a little along that line. <clears throat> and then I need to do this as much. We've had a will. We have children. So we've had a will in place for decades. But um, something I have to remind myself to do is really every five years or so should brush off your will and look at it because mm -hmm. people change and decisions change. And so it's mm -hmm. not something just to leave yeah. in your closet or right. in your safety exactly. deposit box or in your files. Um, exactly. It's something to, to because it's because of um, who we become every, you know, five years we change a bit sometimes and it's, it's just good to, refresh your will and take another, you know, cast your eyes over it again. So, yeah. Right. Well, and once I'm you have it in place, it's that much easier to, to refresh yes. it and revise yes. it. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Cause the, the foundation is put in place then. So exactly. Well, thank you both. Now, Jackie, I'm going to bounce it back to you. Once you got started, was it a difficult process for you or was it fairly simple thought provoking perhaps as well? I, it was thought provoking. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the things I was thinking about is what, you know, I, I love my everyday volunteering, but it also, you know, it takes money to make pet partners run. Um, and I, I totally get that. Um, so getting it, getting it put together, we, I did have one put together. We, you know, if somebody could ask you questions about it and say, what do you want to have happen with this? And what do you want to have happen with that? It becomes much easier to deal with because you're then basically creating the outline that you can plug in the blanks. Um, and once you, and, and there's also no rule that you can't change it even more frequently than mm -hmm. every five years. I, I had, you know, a life event where I uh, got divorced and that's what made me change it. But, um, you know, if something happened to the executors or again, you know, it's a living document right. and uh, here in California, a lot of uh, people use a trust and our will lives under the trust with our powers of attorney and things like that here uh, to keep you know, and, you know, to be honest, it's to keep a lot of money from going to the state and my my uh, estate losing that money when it could be doing something that I want it to do. Yeah. You know, that's so, a good point. Two, two points that you've made, Jackie, mm -hmm. is California has some different um, laws and regulations. So for people who live in California, it may look a little bit different when the, because of the trust. Um, but if and, somebody passes away and they don't have a will and, yes. um, you know, that becomes it's interstate, interstate. And so that's yes. when other people can make decisions on where your money is going to be and your property is going to be placed. So it's, it makes sense exactly. to be, to have a and will. You, and you eat up the, the money that yes. you want to go to do something else gets eaten up by, um, you know, the legal process in that. So exactly. but I begrudge lawyers a living. I don't, I, I know some wonderful <laughs> lawyers, but <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Katie, how about you? Good. Was it, um, was it a thought provoking exercise for you or did you find it somewhat challenging or simple to do? And this was one of the reasons why it took us so long. Um, you know, I would say the mechanics of creating a will were super easy. Um, you know, it took like a day or two, you know, once we had decided the, the hardest part for us um, was decided, deciding how we wanted our assets to be distributed and who we wanted to be guardian for our dog. Um, you know, similar to Jackie, we don't have kids. Um, so, you know, we really had to, to make some of those, um, you know, thought provoking um, decisions about where do we want our, our assets to, to go. Um, once we did that, it was so easy. Like, it was really, really, really easy um, to do it. Um, but the hardest part for us really was deciding um, where we wanted the, the distribution to go. Um, you know, you talked about updating wills. We um, uh, we retired um, in 2019 and moved to, to Florida or 
snowboarding in Florida. So we, we're now Florida residents. And one of the important things that we learned in that process is your will needs to be updated for your state of domicile. Um, so our wills had been created in Connecticut. Um, so we had to have new estate plans all created in Florida when we moved there. Um, right. or else they wouldn't be valid um, in Florida. Yeah, in fact, most states have different laws for that. You know, it's I live in California, which I term the land of litigation. So <laughs> um, <laughs> California is, is more complex than lots of states are. Yeah. But I think sometimes when people start looking into getting a will, they're surprised at what they learn would happen if they didn't have a will. Right. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. just that exploration alone is kind of eye-opening. Right. right. Yeah. No, you're both spot on. And, and uh, it's, go it's so good to hear both of your perspectives on that. Well, another question for you, now that your will's in place, Jackie, I'll start with you. Do you feel more relaxed about it? A little peace of mind? Don't well, have to lot. think about it so much? A lot peace of mind. Um, yeah. It really is a big check mark in your life to know that, for me to know that, um, not just that my animals are cared for by the person that I think will do the best job and make the best decisions, but really um, to know uh, that the people who are going to have to execute my will to uh, know what I want. Yeah. And um, I'm I, I'm a, a, just a little bit obsessed with my dogs, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I even have information in there um, about how, most people will talk about how they want to be disposed of at their final moment. I in my family, we believe in uh, cremation. I don't want to take up land. So um, I have in my will also that I want to be cremated. And I have all of my animals' cremains still. I, I, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but, you know, I, I have said in my will, I, dump us all in a bucket, stir us all up together, <laughs> and then sprinkle us in the ocean. <laughs> and, you know, for me, that's a perfect thing to put in there because I don't know that anybody would have thought to do that. And for me, that's like the perfect thing to do. Right, right. <laughs> Well, you, no, you're not crazy. It just means you love your animals. And, you know, you're talking to people who love animals, Jackie. <laughs> We're all a little obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. Kay, what about you? Did it, once you had your will in place, did it offer you a little, I, oh, I could sleep better, you know, done, scratch that off the list? Absolutely. Finally take it off the to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, no, very relieved. Um, and again, just feeling like our wishes are are well documented. Mm -hmm. And and also, like Jackie said, like knowing that our dog is going to be cared for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as part of it, we also created a list of, you know, who our dogs, you know, vets are in Florida and in Connecticut, you know, mm -hmm. what he likes to eat you know, what medication he's on, you know, so we created that list too, that would go to his, his guardian um, mm -hmm. as well. So that's something else that like, we just feel relieved that they don't have to figure it out or go through this process of trial and error. Like, well, what's wrong with him? Why, you know, you know, who's his vet or why isn't he eating this? Or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, is he allergic to this? So yeah. The, the other thing, thing I, I'm sorry. Uh, the other thing I think that's important is um, having several copies of your will out there. Um, yeah. So my executor has a copy of the will. Um, my friend who I would like to take possession of the animals has a copy of it um, so that nobody's in the dark about right. what's going to happen. And that gives me the opportunity to have a conversation too with them if there's something maybe that they aren't sure about, or maybe they wouldn't want it to be handled that way. And I can say, this is why I want that. Um, you know, I appreciate how you feel. If you want me to do that for you, I'd be happy to, but it gives me an opportunity to have those conversations too, about why I made that decision and why it's important to me. Right. And Jackie, well, you, you just reminded me of something that when my mother passed away, I had a copy of her will. Mm -hmm. um, didn't realize that that's not valid. Um, she died in the state of Georgia and um, you actually have to have an original 
um, for it to be valid. So I went to the attorney that had drawn up her will and I assumed he had the original. They said they didn't keep originals. So, so that was that was shocking to me that I had this document that was my mother's wishes that they were claiming was was not valid because no one had an original copy of it. Um, mm -hmm. So that was one of the questions we asked when we had our wills drawn up in both Connecticut and then in Florida is, you know, are you as the attorney, you know, keeping, you know, original copies of this um, mm -hmm. so that someone will have that. And then we're mm -hmm. making sure that the executor knows who the who the attorney is. Yes. Um, yes. With, their, with the originals. Absolutely. That's a great point. We can all have our wills in effect. But mm -hmm. if we don't know where the original is and who has some copies, then mm -hmm. it's back to, to a lot of um, headaches for the executor and the family and friends. So mm -hmm. good, good point from, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that, Kay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my last question to you is, um, you both have shared your time, your talents, your gifts with pet partners for so many years, and yet you've gone on to include pet partners in your estate plan. So Jackie, I'll start with you again first. What led you to have a charitable intent, including pet partners when you were making, you kind of touched upon it earlier that it's pet partners has offered you much through your life with your animals, but what do you have to add to that? What, how did you come to the decision to include a charity in your estate plan? Well, and you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, I actually have two uh, charities in my sure. will. Um, and the way that I decided to do it, you know, you can say, I, I'd like, you know, this uh, nonprofit to have this amount of money from my estate if it's available. I used a percentage um, because that seemed more uh, reasonable to me because, you know, I don't know when I pass away how much money will be left. Right but I want a portion of it to go there. Um, and I think too, that people might think, well, you know, if I can't leave a quarter of a million dollars to pet partners, then what good is it? But, you know, it's just like we talk about, um, you know, $20 goes a long way. Um, you know, and I know I, I recently actually saw our charity navigator score is quite high. Mm -hmm. So we're doing excellent with, um, thank you, Kay. I'm going to thank you for that because your stewardship <laughs> is helping that a lot the, with the transparency. So um, that's an important thing to look at is the charity that you're going to give to and what's the transparency and are they using your money the way you'd want it to be used? And I know that Pet Partners is doing that. Um, so that was an important thing for me. And even if you have what's, you know, a modest estate, you know, a thousand dollars in your will that gets to pet partners is not a small sum to pet partners. So, you mm -hmm. know, you don't have to be a millionaire or no. even a half a millionaire to do no. something good with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you have children, you're going to, you might make different decisions. You might make smaller decisions or larger decisions, depending on your relationship. But, I don't think people should be put off by thinking, well, I don't have that much. It doesn't make sense for me mm -hmm. to, you know, give $50 in my will to pet partners. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. Any yeah. amount helps. I agree. And, you know, to touch on pond, if when people have kids, we have kids. Mm -hmm. um, but my husband and I have included charities in our estate plan. And we told our kids that. And mm -hmm. I think it also kind of underscores the value of philanthropy um mission to your family mm -hmm. and hopefully that passes on the torch a bit so mm -hmm. they can stop and think that oh my parents were philanthropic and hopefully you know they've made those decisions earlier on but i think mm -hmm. it's sets a good example for the next generation as it's, well. it's so another form of community service that exactly. when i'm not here it will continue yeah mm -hmm. that's right Absolutely. well Kay, how did you decide to um include pet partners in your estate plan, right. you and yeah, your husband. We, yeah, so we approached estate planning um, from the perspective of what legacy do we want to leave? Um, you know, we did some soul searching. We thought about, you know, a small number of areas that we wanted to have a significant impact on versus, you know, leaving, you know, smaller amounts across, 
you know, a large number of organizations and causes. We wanted to do something where this is really going to have an impact in these organizations mm -hmm. and in these causes going forward. Um, so, you know, we picked areas of focus that really aligned with our passions, what we're all about. Mm -hmm. um, we actually picked four areas and then pick causes aligned to those. Um, so for us, the, um, the areas of focus were um, the well-being and health of communities and individuals was one, um, animal welfare, the advancement of women, um, and childhood education. Um, so those were causes that my husband and I have both spent a considerable amount of time, um, you know, volunteering in, uh, supporting um, through the years, and and so pet partners was a was a natural you know choice for us, um, you know, given that the impact that they have, particularly on that first one, yeah. you know, of improving the health and well being of individuals and communities. You know, yes. we've seen it firsthand. You know, with um, you know, for obviously being on the board, I see it firsthand. But you know, with the work that we did at Aetna, you know, bringing in, you know, uh, you know, therapy animals into 32 of our offices and seeing the impact that that had on our employees and their, their well-being, their, you know, their health, their, you know, happiness, their productivity, et cetera. Um, it was certainly a, you know, an easy choice, um, you know, to include pet partners in our, in our estate planning. I have to tell you too, Kay, I've gotten to go to some of the visits um, at Aetna in oh, the Bay Area. You. And okay. I really I really enjoyed it. It's a very different type of visit. And it yeah. actually is one that suits my current therapy dog very well. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so I've enjoyed those too. So from oh, our end, we that. love going too. Thank you for that. Yeah, oh, our employees absolutely great. loved it. Mm -hmm. um, you could see as they were, you know, walking into the into the event, you know, the stress, the you know, the you know, whatever, you know, you could see it on their face, what's going on in their day, mm -hmm. and then you watch them come out, you know, fifteen minutes later, transformed. Like they're smiling, they're happy, yeah. they're you know, more relaxed and ready to take on the afternoon. Yeah. So thank you for uh, for volunteering. Um, yeah. To, uh, to support love it. love it, love it, love it. Thank you. Well, Kay, thanks for helping us launch that program. If not for Kay, um, who knows where we might not be quite as far along as we are uh, that it, that workplace wellness it was, program. It, it was mutual. We were so fortunate to find pet partners. Um, you know, it was uh, it, it was a great marriage to bring uh, bring those organizations together. Oh, win -win. That's, that's great. Thank you. Oh, I see a comment from Janet, and she she also reiterated read, said it's important to include your wishes for who's going to take care of your pet. And it sounds like her um, her animal Henry will be ta well taken care of. So mm -hmm. good for good for you, Janet. You've already you're a step ahead of some of us. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, so I already have a will in place. I mentioned that earlier, and I have found it's pretty simple to do, but I wanted to share a resource with you that Pet Partners has um, in place now on our um, on our webpage and platform, and we'll put that up for you. Um, if you've never heard of Free Will, um, it's, a, it's an organization, oh, there it is, you know, it's so wonderful and people work behind the scenes to put things <laughs> on the, on, while we're speaking, but um, we've partnered with Free Will. It's an online will writing service um, that we have now partnered with, as I mentioned. And Free Will works with about 500 nonprofits around the United States currently and growing, I might add. And so there are um, no fees to the, to the person who uses Free Will, which is on our webpage. And um, it's safe. It, Free Will does not ask you for confidential information like you know, the name and numbers of your brokerage account or know your social security number. It's a process that you can do in your own home. Um, it's, as I mentioned, it's confidential, even though it's on Pet Partners platform, we don't see what you're putting into it. And it's something that during um, August, Make Your Will Month, you can uh, knock that will out of the ballpark this month mm -hmm. and uh, take care of it. And it, um, you know, it's something you can start and you can come back to it if you can't make all those decisions at the, you know, one sitting. 
but it's something that you can do at home in the comfort of your own home. And it also has um, pages for you to fill out about pet care. If, you know, who's going to take care of Gertie or in my case, Nala or Henry in, in Janet's case. So I encourage you to, to visit this website at your leisure. And I've gone through the exercise of free will myself, and it's really simple to do. And um, it was a mock mock up will for me, but I found it really simple and encouraging to do. And there there is a place that you, if you'd like to include a nonprofit like Pet Partners in free will, you can do so, or like um, Kay has done to include multiple nonprofits. Rare is the bequest that we receive that Pet Partners is a sole beneficiary. Usually that's um, a number, a few nonprofits that are included. So you have the ability in free will to include um, charities if you desire. And if you'd like, you can let us know through that um, when you're going through that exercise. But it's there for you to use um, given it's August make a will month. I hope you kind of consider doing that for this month. It's, it's yeah. um, as as uh, Jackie and Kay have pointed out, it's peace of mind and it's yes. free and it's free. Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the things I wanted to jump on and ask uh, Kay and uh, Jackie a little bit, aside from um, making a will and having an estate plan is what's your summer look like now with, um, with pet partners and what are, what are you up to right now? So, Jackie, do you have anything to share that you and uh, Gertie are doing these days? Well, um, I, most people who oh. know me. Oh, there's um, Gertie. I, I, yeah. There's my little Gertie, my little turdy Gertie. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I retired recently. And so that's been a big change. Of, oh, yeah, it's wonderful. Do it when you can. Um, yeah. <laughs> Two of you. Yes. And so that was a big part of my retirement was, wow, now I can spend more time doing the stuff I love instead of the stuff that I have to do. Um, so for me, um, coming from, I was for a long time in a, a high pressure corporate uh, world and I didn't get to do a lot of visits. And I started out doing a lot of visits and now I found myself more doing um, being an evaluator, being an instructor and not getting really to do visits with Gertie so much. And so that's really been my project is uh, the types of visits we really enjoy. And this says a lot about me, but don't judge me, is um, I really enjoy mental health lockdown and juvenile detention. And those are two populations that aren't as popular or sexy with a lot of people, but those are my peeps. And um, so I am, uh, reinvigorating and reopening uh, in Sacramento County's probation juvenile detention. They're very excited to kind of resurrect a program that was there more than five years ago, and it's been gone for a little while. So I'm starting at ground zero with them, but they're very excited at the prospect of having teams come in. Uh, so I'm working with them. I'm working with another county also on a similar program that's adjacent to me. And then uh, working with corporate for two uh, mental health facilities who have never had visits here in Sacramento and helping them sort of figure out what does that look like at their facility and what kind of benefit can they have. So um, I've taken a lot of stuff from my past and I'm kind of stirring it up and updating it. And I'm excited to get back to those populations. I would bet I probably have another month or so before I actually can get in the door with paperwork. But um, it's very, that's very exciting to me to know that that's coming back and I'll get to go back to those populations. Oh, that's really heartwarming, Jackie. And, and look at the good that you and Gertie are gonna be doing out in your community um, with people who have these you know, mental health and issues and the good you're gonna be doing, the two of you. Well, that's remarkable. She, she's, and it's also what she's good at. Um, she is not a lay on the bed at the hospital kind of dog. She is very movement oriented. She's excitable. She loves people. Um, and so those two populations tend to be more mobile and more interactive for her. She's also profoundly deaf. So it really doesn't matter what kind of commotions going on in those facilities. Mm -hmm. She thinks it's a party. 
So, <laughs> so it works all the way around. It's a party for Gertie. It is. Every day is a party for Gertie. So, every oh, day. oh, that's amazing. That's great. Thank you for all you do for others. It's so appreciated. Well, Pet Partners is what allows me to do it. So yeah. that's why you're in my will. It's a team. It's a yep. team. Well, Kay, I know from a past conversation way back when you and uh, Ozzy are big walkers. And so are you lacing up your tennis shoes for, for some upcoming walks? Share what you've got going on. We are. Oh, we there are. they are. There we are. That was last year's world largest pet walk. Um, we are getting ready again for the, uh, for the 2021 world's largest pet walk, September 25th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we've already registered as a team. We've started our fundraising efforts. We've certainly started our training. Um, so, you know, Ozzy, you know, since we retired, Ozzy is getting a lot of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you are too. I, yeah, I guess. So he, um, I think he needs some more rest. Um, but he gets two long walks a day. And uh, last year he did 10 miles at the uh, world's largest pet walk. And as you can see from that photo, he's not that big of a dog. He's only 27 pounds. Uh, he's a Tibetan terrier. Um, he's four years old now, um, but he is super excited to uh, to get out there and uh, and walk and, and raise a lot of money for uh, for a great cause. That so we're is great. That. Oh, we're so excited. And, you know, that's just, um, what is it, about seven weeks away, roughly? I'm not going to add up the did So... You know, yeah. those people who are listening and watching, if you'd like to join in um, to get your steps in that day, September 25th, we're excited. Big day for pet partners. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see a lot of people out walking all sorts of kind of animals. It should be fun. Exactly. So you can look at our website. Things we can do, you know, while the pandemic is still going on right. around us, we can right. get out and walk. We can do it, mm -hmm. you know, with, you know, virtual teams, have people walk in one part of the country and, you know, still be part of your team. We don't all have to be together to do it. So it's a, it's a great way to, uh, to support a cause, you know, when we can't all be together. I know. Right. And, yeah. and, and that's a good point that we can get out and walk. That's something we can still do. So, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you for, for uh, lacing up your tennis shoes again next month and hitting the, hitting the parks or the sidewalks, whatever you and and Ozzy and Mark tend to be headed out that direction. So thank you. Well, Jackie and Kate, is there anything you'd like to add at the end um, of our time together today? Uh, any parting words of wisdom, if you will? Uh, you know, it covers so many things. Go do it. Yeah, go do it. And right. I have to do a little shout out to my friends, Michelle and Jeffrey. So oh. I see you in there, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I see big hugs yeah. to friends, Gertie and Jackie from Connecticut from Michelle. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, how about I, you? Anything to add before anything. we wrap up? You know, just to echo to not procrastinate. Like it, yeah. it's something that we literally put off for so long. And when we did it, we were just like, how did it take us so long to do this? <laughs> um, you know, even if you don't, you know, even if it's not perfect, like get something in there. It's better than having a probate court decide yes. where your assets should go. Like just put something down and you can always revise it. And I love the the free will um, yes. solution. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a great tool to go in and it's free and it helps guide you through it. And it's quick and it's easy and get something done. So, And, you know, even if you don't finish it, the other thing is, if you don't get it finished, but you let people be aware that you're doing it and maybe print a copy or give a copy to a friend as you're working on it, in a lot of states, it, it will prove that you had an intention right. of doing something like this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the court will take that into consideration. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes not, but I'm really big on stacking the deck in my favor. So, <laughs> so even if you don't get it finished, it shall, still shows that you had intent to do a particular thing. Right. Absolutely. Right. I've heard of bequests or uh, wills being written on a cocktail napkin. Yes. And this is so much better. You know, you can go <laughs> online and print sure. it off for yourself and, and go back and review it. So no cocktail napkins for your will. 
Uh, but whether you see an attorney or use this uh, free resource, free will, um, you know, maybe you can make a, um, a, a, a goal to yourself to have uh, at least get started and completed in August. It's early in the month and it's a good resource. So I hope you visit free will on our site and get started. It's very yeah. easy. Well, Jackie and Kay, and for all those joined us today, I'm so appreciative of sharing uh, your time with us. And to you and Jackie and Kay, thank you again for all you do for pet partners and for other people in the community. It's appreciated so much. We, um, I don't know what we do without our volunteers and you are um, somebody, both of you, very special to pet partners. So thank you again. Well, thank you. Pet partners is very special to us as well. Yeah, All right. Thank you for everything you're doing and for setting up this session um, mm -hmm. for everyone. It's so it's such valuable information. Yes. Yes. Well, and, and I'm you. so pleased that, you know, pet partners thought about coming up with a free tool to make it easy because that is a huge barrier. So that was an awesome idea um, yeah. to get this started. So good. Well, thank you, pet partners. Yes. Well, thank you. And for joining us. And for those that listen, thank you for sharing your time with us today. So yes. everybody have a great afternoon and visit free will when you get a chance and have a great weekend. Sounds good. Okay. Bye, Bye everybody.